Today, we are going to look into the query, can we save energy and thereby save money by switching off the geyser or should we allow it to run continuously for 24 hours? This question only arises for storage geysers. Instant geysers are supposed to be run instantly and shut off immediately after use. To investigate this query, we need to know about three concepts. One, stunning loss and working of the thermostat. Second, time taken by the water heater to fully heat water. Third, energy consumed by water heater. We'll start with this AI generated image. The AI used here is Adobe Firefly. A temperature regulator with indicators was superimposed on this image. Let's see inside of this geyser. We'll focus on two main parts. The heating element, this one, and thermostat, which is shown here. Hot water pipe, cold water pipe, and outlet tank with insulation are also shown. When we switch on the geyser, the element starts heating the water and this red indicator shows that. After some times, the maximum temperature is attained by the water and the thermostat kicks in and stops the power of the element. A blue indicator shows this state. Do you know what is the maximum temperature inside the geyser? In the old geysers, the maximum temperature was kept around 60 degrees Celsius. Nowadays, in modern geysers, the option of setting the temperature anywhere between 40 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius is available. After this brief introduction, now let's talk about first concept that is standing loss. It is heat loss by a water heater to the surroundings in 24 hours and is measured in kilowatt hours per 24 hour. The kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. The difference between water temperature in geyser and ambient temperature is kept at 45 degrees Celsius for measuring standing loss of star rated geysers. Standing loss occurs even when we do not use water. The thermostat setting plays an important role in functioning of a geyser. Let's study this graph to understand the role of a thermostat. This is the starting point. When the water is fully hot, let's say 60 degrees Celsius, the geyser is ready to use. If we do not use water, the heat will be lost to the surrounding. The heat is lost because of the pipes and efficiency of insulation. Of course, better insulation means less loss of heat. The loss of heat leads to decrease in water temperature inside the geyser. This can happen for 4 to 5 hours till lower cutoff of thermostat let's say 54 degrees Celsius. At this point, thermostat turns on the element. Now the temperature of the water starts rising and when it reaches the thermostat's upper cutoff, let's say 60 degrees Celsius, thermostat cuts off the power of the element and heating stops. Again, if no water is withdrawn, the geyser will start losing heat and this cycle will continue if we do not use water. In fact, this is how standing loss is measured, in which geyser is allowed to run for 48 hours and no water is used. One important condition for measuring standing loss is that the temperature difference between water and surrounding is kept at 45 degrees Celsius. Standing loss is therefore reported as kilowatt hours per 24 hours per 45 degrees Celsius. Thus, in case of extreme cold weather conditions, and higher water temperature, the geyser will lose more heat than that of reported standing loss as the temperature difference will be greater than 45 degrees Celsius. The rate of heat loss depends upon temperature difference. Let's see this by this analogy. Here we have two water tanks at a different height, whereas taps are at same height. If we open the tap, then obviously the water in this tap will flow at a higher rate than this tap. Tank 1 represents geyser at 80 degrees Celsius, whereas tank 2 represents geyser at 60 degrees Celsius. The ambient temperature of 15 degrees Celsius 
is represented by ta so the rate and amount of heat loss in given time will be higher in first case provided the quality of geysers is same in both cases to understand how much time is taken by the geyser to heat the water we must understand the concept of specific heat which is our second concept specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of substance by a unit degree celsius let's say there is an object that has a mass of 1 kg and having initial temperature of 25 degrees celsius by heating this object temperature can be raised to 26 degree celsius the temperature difference of 1 degree c is there so the amount of heat which is used by this substance is known as specific heat now we can write the formula for specific heat that is amount of heat per unit mass per unit rise in temperature the formula for heat q can thus be derived as ms delta t to find the time required to heat the water a geyser with specifications shown here is chosen this is a 25 liter geyser which requires 2 kilowatt power to run it the standing loss is 0.693 kilowatt hours it is assumed that the higher cut off temperature is 60 degree celsius and the initial water temperature is 15 degree celsius we know that power is heat per unit time in this equation power is known that is 2 kilowatt to find the time we need amount of heat we have derived the formula for heat that is q is equal to ms delta t we can find mass of water from given volume of water using density of water density of water is 1 kg per liter so mass of 25 liter water comes out to be 25 kg to find the required heat we need specific heat of water which is 4.18 kJ per kg per degree celsius the only thing left is change in temperature which can be found out by subtracting initial temperature from hot water temperature this will give temperature difference as 45 degree celsius so around 4700 kJ of heat is required to raise the temperature of 25 liter of water from 15 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius but now we can find time by using heat and taking power as 2 kW which is 2 kJ per second but we must consider the efficiency when we convert electric J to thermal J or thermal to electric J because 4700 kJ are thermal J and 2 kJ in denominator are electric J the efficiency of conversion from electric to thermal energy is around 99.9% because all of the electricity can be converted to heat whereas you can only convert some part of thermal energy to electricity so this efficiency can be as low as 25% as we are converting electrical to thermal energy we will assume 100% efficiency so it takes around 40 minutes to heat 25 liter of water by 2 kilowatt geyser now this time will vary depending upon specifications of geyser for example a 2.5 kilowatt 20 liter geyser will take just 25 minutes to heat 20 liter of water from 15 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius it is now time to discuss our third concept that is energy consumed by water heater for the same geyser considered earlier two additional assumptions are made geyser is used by a family consisting of four members each member uses 25 liter of fully hot water that is at 60 degree celsius under these conditions the time for heating 25 liters of water was calculated as 40 minutes or 0.66 hours therefore the running time of the geyser for every member is 40 minutes or 0.66 hours as calculated earlier then the total daily consumption of energy will be 5.3 kilowatt hours so in a month energy consumed will be 159 kilowatt hours we'll now consider two cases 
In first case, we can keep the geyser running all the time. In second, we will switch it off after use. In the first case, if we do not switch off this geyser for the whole month, then the energy consumed in a month because of the standing loss will be 21 kilowatt hour or 21 units of electricity. The energy consumption over a span of 30 days will be 180 units. So the maximum energy saved in a month can be 21 units from this geyser. So in second case, we will switch it off after use. Now let us discuss case 2, switching off the geyser. Three scenarios will be dealt with. In the first scenario, the water is fully hot, but the geyser is switched off prior to the last person using it. In the second scenario, the geyser is turned off right after the last person uses it. In the third, the geyser is switched off after half an hour. Let's consider scenario 1. Assume three members of the family have already taken bath and the boy is the last one to take bath. The blue indicator shows that the water is fully hot. The boy turns off the geyser and takes the bath using 25 liters of hot water. There will be no stunning loss, so 21 units of electricity can be saved in a month in this scenario. In the second scenario, again assume three members have already used the geyser. The water is fully hot. This time the boy doesn't turn off the geyser and starts taking bath. Since the water is taken from the geyser, water temperature will be lower. Thermostat will turn on the element. After taking bath, boy switches off the geyser. In this scenario, some energy will be wasted depending upon the time taken by the boy for taking the bath and the quantity of the water used by the boy. So we may or may not save energy in this case. In the third scenario, again, boy was the last one to take bath. He switches off the geyser after half an hour of taking bath. The additional energy consumed in 30 minutes will be 1 kilowatt hour. Since this amount is greater than the standing loss, which was specified as 0.693 kilowatt hour or 24 hour for this geyser, in the next 24 hour, 0.693 kilowatt hours of energy will be lost. So in this case, same energy will be lost as in case 1 and there is no benefit in terms of energy saving by switching off the geyser. Now let's summarize. We have discussed two cases. In case 1, geyser is not switched off. The energy loss will be equivalent to the standing loss of the geyser. In case 2, geyser is switched off. The best scenario out of three scenarios is scenario 1, in which geyser is switched off prior to the last person using it. Here is the bonus material. This is a B star label which we have already seen. It is compulsory to mention standing loss on BE star rated geysers. The requirement of standing loss have become stringent over time for star rated geysers. The standing loss for a 25 liter geyser was 1.5 kilowatt hours in 1990s and the standing loss for a modern 25 liter 5 star geyser is 0.46 kilowatt hours. So it may be prudent to buy a new geyser instead of repairing a very old geyser. Also the standing loss is different for different rating as shown here. The initial cost of one star rated geyser may be low but the running cost will be high as it will be losing more energy. Also standing loss will be different for different capacities. It will increase as the capacity increase. However, standing loss per liter of geyser capacity will decrease as the capacity of geyser increase. So buying a higher capacity geyser may make sense if daily requirements are high instead of using a lower capacity geyser multiple times. Thank you very much.